everyone, it's Lee with Arts Council OKC Creative Aging, and today we're going to do watercolor frogs because frogs are cool. And the materials you're going to need are a number two pencil, watercolor paper, watercolors, various sizes of brushes, and paper towels for blotting, and of course, water. You know, frogs are really pretty cool because you have your poison dart frogs, which have all sorts of amazing colors in nature. So basically, if you want to do a rainbow frog, they do exist. And even if they didn't, you know, I'm always about, you know, you guys doing something that feels good to you creatively. So, you know, because I've made up a couple of frogs here as well. So we're just using a half sheet of watercolor paper so you don't have to feel like you have to do a giant image of a frog and because frogs are deceptively complex I mean they're simple but they're also really pretty easy and they're funny looking and cool at the same time so all right let's go ahead and get started and I'll um, get this stuff out of the way Ooh, hello all right that way you guys can get ready while well, I'm getting ready in here. Right. You're probably already ready though. Okay, thank you. And since I'm working on top of masonite, this, what I've got underneath is a um, large paper palette. So it's kind of like wax paper. So it will, so that when I do some watercolors on it, it won't, um, won't soak up the water. Just in case, but you know, so you can do a front angle of a frog, a side, three quarter, whatever you want to do. And I have a couple that I'll do today. This guy, you know, is a fun tree frog. He's a little more cartoony, just so that you guys can have fun with it. They don't have to be uber realistic. And then this guy is another poison dart frog that I have um, already ready to go. But just, you know, really just simplify the shapes. I like to start, like if they're so if it's sitting on something or if it's, you know, hanging on, you know, a piece of bamboo or branch or whatever, I like to draw that first. So then you'll be able to figure out where your frog is in relation. And this guy, you know, simple shapes break it down, you know, like an oval and they have funny eyes and then they have little weird little hands. And then his leg is coming around here and grabbing on that other toe. So I just really kind of have fun with it. And frogs are weird looking, so your frog is gonna look amazing whether it looks like a real frog or not. So and this guy over here, he's on, you know, he's on probably a log. And so I just have a line in here so then I know that I want his body to be up here. And this guy, his leg is bending back and then his foot's coming down. He also has weird toes too. And I went ahead and put in some funky spots. Now you can change them and do stripes because there are real frogs out there that actually have stripes. So just kind of have fun with it. I just kind of like to look at something. To, so for me, I want an accurate thing and then you can totally change it up as you go. So I'm going to start here. So what we can do is, you know, this is a little tree frog guy. Um, and I think we're going to do some bright wild colors with this one over here. So let's start with the simple one and let's do this here. Uh, and you know, I like, if you want any kind of a limey green, I kind of start with a yellow under coat. Oops, I forgot the side of his body. Hello. So we'll stop it right there. And I'm just kind of doing a light coat, okay? And then some of the, you know, their hands are kind of orangey red. Their fingers are, and their eyes are still. So, anyway. Yellow just kind of punches those colors up, so that's kind of what I'm doing in here. And it's okay if you get it on the, you know, the tree branch or bamboo or whatever he's sitting on because I'm going to come back over that anyway. So I'm just going to give him a little base coat. And I know some of you are going to be a little more precise than I am, but we're just getting the base color in here. And then while it's still kind of wet, I'm going to go in. I do have a... just depends on what kind of 
how dark you want your green to be. And it's pretty dark, but it'll soften up if I work it into that yellow. And I'm just going to kind of bring it down. Just a little bit here. And then I'm going to spread this out so he has, doesn't have such a green belly. So it's a little more yellow. Okay. So I, and see what I'm doing is just moving the green around. So if it gets too dark, then just move it. Like, oh, that's very dark. So anyway. And I know some of these tree frogs have like purple legs and whatever, but just for ease, I'm gonna just kind of give this guy some green legs and some orangey fingers and toes. And if you want to, you can go over your pencil lines with a pen, you know, with that kind of, because I did these lines on him pretty dark. So since he's a little more cartoony, that's totally fine. And if you don't want, want a really really heavy black line like the ultra fine sharpie you can use actually a black ballpoint pen you know it gives you a line but it's not so stark you know to make it so dark that it jumps out at you it's a little more subtle for an outline because these guys have a ballpoint pen so they have an outline but it's not as dramatically dark Okay, so now I'm going to use a couple of, like a little kind of more of a red orange here on his, oof, that's pretty bright, but I like it. So, and then, you know, just keep moving it. I could be using a smaller brush for his fingers, but that's all right. And, you know, for this, I'm going to, I'm, um, I'm gonna have him have some red eyes because they have those crazy red eyes, reddish orange eyes. Whoop! But see, what I also did is I did this right after I put some green up there, so it's still kind of wet. So I kind of want to get that off. So, and they have those weird, funky, orangey red eyes. So we're doing, you know, I'm just getting in a base coat of paint here. And that's nice and dark, so I'm gonna just add a little water and just keep moving it here. Because you're gonna come back once this first layer of paint dries and kind of darken some things a little bit to give it a little more depth and visual interest. So, but really, this is, you know, just nice little soothing. Well, and I added some nice darker bits already on this one. It'll still dry a little bit lighter, but if you think you've got a little too dark too fast, then you take some of it off with just dipping your brush in water and then blotting it on your paper towel. So I'm going to come in here and do this other hand. And I know this one... Since you can see his fingers go back up in the arm, then what I'll do is I will add some more water. But then I'm just gonna drag it up into the arm because then it kind of blends in. Okay. So then that kind of fades into the green. Okay, and then I'll kind of come over here and add a little bit darker to this one. Okay. So you guys get the idea. And like I said, you can totally do, you know, a rainbow frog or 
you know, polka dots, whatever. Chances are it probably exists in the poison dart frog world, so it's pretty amazing. Okay. So then I'm going to come here and do the toes down here. But you guys, so I'm just move, you know, really simple. Just get some paint on there and then you just move it around with your brush and just keep spreading it out. I know tree frogs are often on bamboo or whatever, so you can even put lines in it like it's on a piece of bamboo or you can treat it more just like a tree whatever you want and then if you think that the red is a little dark you can also add more yellow underneath to make it more orangey but you can see that it kind of changes the color already just by having that little bit of yellow underneath and the ones that have more yellow underneath you can tell that it's a little different color and I'm going to bring this up and kind of fade it out too like I did the other one. Ooh, not that much, however. So, just rinsing my brush off, getting water on it, and kind of coming back down. Okay. So, now I'm going to come in here and add a little bit more into this. Okay. And then we'll, we'll do the same thing with the green on the head. We'll come back in and add little bits of darker green, you know, since some of it has dried already. But what I'll do is we'll, just so that it has a little more depth to it. And, Yellow in here. Ooh. I'm just gonna spread that out. And then if you think it got too dark there, we're just gonna move it on over to this one to share. And then I kind of like to kind of do a little rounding because I know this is his belly even though I forgot to do his belly line I just kind of like to paint stuff kind of in a circular motion and then you can even come in if you want add a little bit of a curve for his chin except it's still pretty wet so Some more of his cheeks, and then a little more dimension to his arm, and then. But you can kind of see how just by doing that, it gives him a little, a little more dimension. Oops, I had a little on the brush here, because I was going to bring it down in here to his leg. So you'll just kind of keep going over them a little bit and you just want to make sure that if you get stuff a little too dark or a harsh line then just add water. Just put your and get some water on your brush and just kind of tap it and soften it. And then if you want a little more edge here then we'll kind of come in with some green to get the edge of this belly here. Okay. So you'll just kind of keep coming back and adding a little bit more or taking some off or just moving it around and okay. And then I, you know, I know that the interior of their eyes a lot of times are black, but I kind of like to start with some brown and then you can always get darker. 
So I'm just taking this and just dotting it a little bit in there. And then I'm just leaving a little bit of white for a um, reflection. You don't have to, but I like to do that. And then when it dries, so uh, you know, kind of take some of this up And if you do that, just push the brown out into the red, and it'll be just fine. Because you'll have more later. Okay. And then, you know, like when this dries a little bit, you can go back in and add a little more brown. But that gives you the base coat. And same thing, like, with your tree here. Um, you know, I can do a little bit of you know, kind of yellow and brown if, it, if I want to kind of simulate some bamboo-ish. And you don't even have, you don't have to paint all, but you can just do a little suggestion of color in here and that way the focus is more on the frog itself. And a little brown in here. Oops, that's a bit much, hey? But that's all right. We'll just move it and that way I can kind of come in here and do some little segmented looking bits here. Kind of give the suggestion of bamboo segments. And then this, since it's pretty just flat brown, I'm going to go in with just with water on my brush and just move it and pull some of it off and then just kind of push it around here so it softens that and it'll dry lighter too. And I'm just going to carry it on up. And then it may dry light enough that you don't really see this, you know, divisions like any segments that bamboo has and that's fine. You can make it, you can go back and make it darker later or not. So we'll come back and, you know, kind of, then you can add your nice little details that you want with you know just a lot of a lot more pigment and less water but he's got your little base he's kind of cute little tree frog nice all right so what i did is i had to uh, you know i got a lot of the color in here and you know it's kind of modeled which i really like i like that under you know the under color but sometimes when your paper gets so wet you have to let it relax and dry. So you can take a hair dryer and help it dry more quickly because, you know, if I were to have kept doing what I was trying to do, it would have just, when the paper was wet enough, it would have just kept bleeding in. So now it's all really pretty dry. So I'm gonna come back and add some more of the bright pink, but I'm using less water and a lot more paint because what I wanna do is come in and do some little kind of textural dots. So we'll just kind of see. And so you can tell automatically that the paper is holding the shape of the dot a lot better. Because you know a lot of frogs have that interesting texture. So I kind of wanted just to do a test to see that it was dry enough. So now what I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to add a few more of these. And like if I really wanted a really bright pink dot I'm going to kind of come back in and do a little bit darker but you can kind of go around the edge and add just kind of an interesting textural bit to it too and when it dries it'll kind of relax a little bit it won't be as three-dimensional now sometimes they will dry nicely like that too so just depends but I also like to you know add color but I don't really want a flat solid piece of pink so that's why I'm coming in here and doing the dotting because I think it makes it more interesting of course because frogs are kind of lumpy anyway so and like I said I'm really just using my brush is really kind of dry it's wet enough to pick up the paint but it's really pretty dry so I have a lot more pigment on it than I do water because that's, I, I'm really trying to get this bright pink to stick out. And you can kind of come back and blend some of this stuff down. And if you want to add another 
color you can too, so we can come back in and add some of that other kind of reddish purple. I'm going to do the same thing with it too. But it's a lot darker when it's dry, so I'm going to come back in here and kind of just add a little bit of water. So I'll bet I'm still going to move it around. So it's still a little bit darker, but you know, when it dries, it'll be a little bit lighter, but it'll still have a nice dark contrast compared to the light pink. So you're just going to kind of come in and, and do this around, you know, wherever you want it. But I also, like I said, I like having, I don't like just having a solid color, you know, a solid paint. You know, by dotting it, it kind of, and moving it around, it gives the illusion that it's a solid color, but it doesn't look as flat because you're, it's not just one solid flat piece of paint. So now I'm going to kind of come back and do a little more light pink in here. And now my brush is wetter this time, so that's fine. I'm just going to kind of bounce it around. And the whole idea of this frog is he's kind of a little mottled purple and pink frog. So and then I want to dry it. I want to dry this up a little more so that I can kind of come in and add some more of the pink dots like I had before, but I want them to stay more instead of spread out because the paper is too wet. Add some dark purple down here too. And then anything that you kind of go, uh, I'm not really sure if I like that very much. Then just go in and you can add water and then just spread it out. No big deal. Because I'm obviously changed my mind as to how I wanted to have distinct spots and, you know, pink spots and purple underneath. Which is totally fine. You're entitled to change your mind because sometimes you get in here and you think what you will like, you don't, and then you do something else. So it's part of the learning process. So yeah. Okay. So now I'm in danger of getting just too much of a flat paint look. I know why too. I'm gonna get some of this off here. Just using water and then I'm blotting it on my paper towel to pick it up. Okay. Because I'd much rather have, you know, blotches of color than having a lot of flat paint. Okay. Just kind of coming back in with a little bit darker because I want the legs to be a little bit darker, slightly more solid looking. Oh, and that is a toe right there. Okay. Okay. So you can just kind of see I'm kind of going around and. And if you get too much, you know, of a solid color, that's okay. We can go back in and add a little bit of light. Okay. And, you know, this is a process, you know, uh, watercolor can be pretty fast, but, you know, this is, you're not about, hur don't feel you need to hurry. This is, you know, take your time. And it takes, you know, if you want to, have, you know, turn out nicely, it takes more time than you think, so. Just 
and embrace your mistakes as you're going along because you know this watercolor is great because you can kind of incorporate different things and you can even go over it so just kind of have fun with it and then what I want to try to do now is I'm going to do some white same kind of thing where I'm going to try to get as much white on the brush and just kind of come in with little dots now and some of it may be a little too wet still yep that's what's happening but that's okay I'm not going to worry about it I just want to add a little bit more of the dark in here. And see, just by kind of bouncing my brush up and down on here, it moves the paint around, but I don't get a specific line because I don't really want to have a line. Now, if you want a line for like the eyebrow area or under the eye, not that frogs have eyebrows, but then you can do that. But and then just be aware, there is a point at which you start overworking it. So I think what I need to do is just kind of let the frog relax a little bit. And I'll add a little more kind of dark pink in here just to kind of have it. I'm going to do that on this so he's got this. And then I'm probably going to kind of call it on the frog here. But I want to kind of denote his arm a little bit more in here. That's his shoulder. Because then, then I can just kind of let him relax a minute while I work on the, um, whatever his log that he's on. So, I just want to get a little... So I'm kind of going back in like what I did originally just to kind of give some visual interest. Okay, and then I'll do the frog's eye too. But then that way I can kind of let him relax a little bit. Okay. Ooh, totally lost his mouth in here, but that's okay. He looks a little funky lumpy, but that's okay. So I'm going to let him dry, but I'm going to go in with just a little bit of water and soften that hard edge. Just a little bit. Because, you know, when you have a surface texture on something, it, you know, takes a little more time. And, you know, you're in watercolors, you're going to have to go over it a few times, and you just kind of want to take your time. So while he's relaxing, hmm, I can just have it be on some green. And I'm not going to really fill it in, I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of... He could be on a leaf, he could be on a log, he could be on... And you certainly don't have to add color down here either. But I'm just kind of... And I just want it to be a hint, so I'm going to kind of come in here with just water on my brush and kind of spread it out. Oops, but I almost made his toes go away too. So that's one thing, is just be aware that if you've been painting on your frog, you probably want to let it dry a little bit longer than I did. So I'm just going to kind of go in and get a little bit of color. And then you can kind of tap the brush along here and that kind of moves some paint around and kind of gives it a little a little more interesting look to it. Okay. Or you can make a not so attractive green, that's okay too, so okay, let's see. I'm gonna do a little bit. Let's see, I'm just gonna for fun. And I, you know, I use mostly just purple on here, but I'm just kind of moving it around so it's not too dark. And then when the rest of it has dried around it, then I'll kind of come back and add it. And then you can also 
also take that you know, purple and you can kind of go around. You want to have an outline around some of your spots, maybe. That's a little bit extreme, so maybe not. So I'm just going to take a brush with water and just kind of fade it in. But the purple, you know, if you get it, it gets dark really fast. But see, but then you can also create an interesting effect with it by just so you have a little faint dark line around it and then it's blending out so we can do that some more around here too okay because you want to have some contrast you don't want everything to be the same darkness and light so then i'm going to do the go over the eye a little bit more now that it's dried a little bit okay and then I'll probably go around with these um, spots like this too. But you don't have to watch me do that. But So just really kind of have fun with your frogs and just experiment with, you know, color blending or just have a nice little sweet green frog, which are also cool too. So just take your time and then I can, you know, you can go in and find his mouth again and bring that back out but oh and his nostrils under there somewhere too and then we can bring out his you know arms again but you get the idea see so it's just coming back and layering more little bits of color and moving it around because he's gonna he's starting to be a little more interesting okay all right so just take your time and enjoy yourself and have fun with Megan frogs and we'll see you next time bye-bye